Hi, this is Peter Upvold, and welcome to this screencast episode of the Stealth Mac Podcast. Now, in this screencast, I'm going to try and introduce the terminal within Mac OS X, show how to start it up, and introduce a few key concepts that might help you to understand what the terminal is and how to use it a bit better. Now, most of the time when you're using Mac, you're interacting with the graphical user interface here, or the GUI. You click on buttons, and you open menus, and so on, and that's how you tell the computer what you want it to do. But that's not the only way of interacting with the computer. A command line interface, which is what the terminal is, is where you have a prompt and you type in commands with the keyboard. Now it's perhaps a more geeky and less intuitive at first way to use a computer, but it can prove to be very powerful for certain tasks and people that really love the terminal can really be a lot quicker doing one particular task in it than they can with a GUI. And it certainly doesn't hurt as a Mac user to have some understanding of how the Unix command line that's underneath all the prettiness of OS X actually works, and how to use it a little bit. Even if it is just if you need to run a defaults command from time to time to change a hidden preference or something. It's useful to just have that knowledge. So let's, let's actually start up the terminal. I'm going to show you around and show you some of the concepts very, very briefly and sort of a, a very surface look at things. We're not going to go too deep here so that maybe we can build on this later in a future screencast. So I'm just going to close this Safari window down. I've actually got the terminal up here. If you don't already have the terminal up, you can go to uh, your hard drive, the Applications folder, and inside Utilities, you will find Terminal. And you might want to drag that to the dock if you think you're going to use it a lot. Um, but uh, you can find it there, and you can probably use Spotlight or whatever the other launching solution you have to launch Terminal. And you'll get a window like this, as I say, here is the prompt, and it's just waiting now for me to type in a command that it can go and do. Now before we get started actually typing in commands, um, your display will probably have a smaller font, and you might want to just make that a little bigger, turn on the anti-aliasing, make it a bit nicer to look at. And I'm just going to show you how to do that with the preferences of the terminal. So if we go in here to the terminal menu and choose preferences, you'll see there's a on the settings tab, just make sure on the settings tab, um, there, are, there are actually a few styles you can set up. I can actually just click, double click each of these and it'll open a new window in that style. Um, what I've done, uh, if I just uh, find the settings window again, is I've set up this, which is my basic style, to actually be 13 point font. So what I've done there is I've just gone onto basic click change and you can edit the font size. Now I recommend you stay with a monospaced font like Monaco just so you can line up the characters if you're doing a long command or something. So I wouldn't recommend something anything too fancy. I think stick with Monaco but you might want to just edit that size if you can't see it very well. Uh, and I'd also recommend turning on anti-alias text here because it does make the text look a lot smoother especially at the larger sizes. Now, for this particular window, I've actually got basic large. For the purpose of the screencast, I've upped the size even further to 16 point, just so you can see it if, you, if you're watching in a lower resolution. Um, but most of the time, I use 13 point. So you can, you can play around with all these settings to get the terminal to look how you want um, and uh, behave a little friendlier to you if you uh, want it a bit different. So now we've done that, here we are. We're back at this prompt, which is our command line. So let's have a look. There are a load of commands I could type in here, but there's no sort of help. If I don't know what to type in this uh, command line, you know, I'm stuck. I don't know how to interact with the com this computer unless I've learned some commands. So let's just do a basic few commands. I'm going to teach you the command PWD here. So all we need to do to run that is type in PWD and press the return key. And as you can see, that's produced some output and it tells me slash users slash Peter. So PWD actually stands for print working directory and it just says it's it's asking the computer well which folder am I in right now uh, and that folder I'm in right now is my home folder slash users slash Peter. Now in, in the command line in the terminal you have this concept of being in a working directory. Any command that I run right now will happen in the context of my home folder. For example, if I said remove the file called document, it would look for a file called document in this folder. Now we can change the working directory and go to a different place in the file system and act on the files in there by using the command cd. I just need to type in cd, then I type a space, and then the folder that I want to go to. So I have a folder called 
um, let's think I have a folder called public inside my home folder so if I just type public I'm gonna use the capitals there just because that's conventional you actually don't have to but I recommend you do just in case you move over to Linux or another system which is generally case sensitive so I just say CD space and then the name of the folder I want to go to and because that's inside my home folder slash user slash Peter slash public if I press enter oops if I press enter or return that's going to take me into the public folder and now if I run PWD again you can see I'm in public so we know how to change the working directory now if I want to go up one level of the working directory back to my home folder I can type CD space dot dot and those two dots mean go up one level. So there we are, we're back now in my home folder. We can just verify that. Now this obviously works for full parts as well, so if I wanted to change directory into the library folder at the root of the hard drive, I'd do cd space slash, that takes me, that means this isn't a relative path, you're going all the way up to the top of the, top of the hard drive and then going down into library. And I could run to pwd there and you see we're outside of the user's Peter bit now. Uh, but for now I'm just going to type CD. If you type CD on your own, on its own, sorry, if you type CD on its own it will take you back to your home folder automatically. So there we are, we're back to slash users slash Peter now. Okay, so we've we've learnt how to navigate around and just be in the right folder for doing something. But on its own that's not particularly useful because all you're doing is, is like opening folders in the finder and not doing anything with them. So what we're going to now do is learn how to use the command ls, and ls gives you a listing of the files in the current working directory. So just before I do that, I'm going to run the command clear, which just clears the screen of all the uh, previous commands so we don't get confused between the old ones. Right, so let's have a look now at the command ls, which stands for list. If I just run ls here in my home directory, and then press enter, I get a list here of all of the uh, files in folders, there are just folders as it happens in this folder, uh, that are in this. They're in the working directory. So you can see I've got applications, I've got DMGs and downloads and, and all the folders you'd expect to find in my home directory. And this is exactly the same process as you would do by looking at a folder in the finder. You can just see what's in that folder. If we do the example of going up to the uh, root level library again, so CD slash library will take us into that folder we can just verify that we're there now if I run ls in the library you can see there's a different set of folders and we can see all the different items inside the library folder so there we go now we can navigate through the file system and list the directory and see what files and folders are in it so that's good. If I'm, I'm just now going to cd back to my home directory with by, by issuing the command cd on its own and clear the display out again. Okay, now ls on its own, let's just do that again, gives us in this sort of uh, tabbed out format just shows us the items. LS can actually do a bit more than that. It can show us a bit more information about these items and it can show us what, whether they're a folder or a file and the permissions and who owns it and the date modified and so on. Now how we tell it to do this is we give it what's known as a command line switch. I'm just going to show you this and then explain it. So if I run LS space and then a hyphen but I'll call it dash L now this hyphen L is a command line switch and what it means is give me the long listing for this folder. So I'll press enter here and you see the display has changed quite significantly. We've got the same contents um, but it's displayed quite differently. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into uh, all of the detail and, and explain what all this listing means but you can see we have an owner here we have a group that owns that file here. There's a file size column here which is actually uh, I think it's in bytes and we also have a last modified date that, that was a couple of days ago. So using the dash L 
command line switch, we instruct LS to do its job in a slightly different way. So that's how we can give extra information to a program um, to alter exactly how it's going to do its job using a command line switch. Now there's actually another command line switch uh, which is dash A which, show, which asks LS to show all the files in the folder whether or not they're hidden and if they're hidden they begin with a dot. So let me just run LS hyphen A you see now we get again a different uh, result. We've got a lot of hidden files here that begin with a dot. dot ds underscore store, which just stores information about how the finder looks at the file. There's some Xcode stuff in here, um, some other Unixy stuff that I've done. Um, but that shows you there that dash a is the command line switch that tells ls to do something different, i.e. it shows all the files whether or not they're hidden. Now I can actually combine these two switches together. I can either do it like this which is ls dash l space dash a so we just uh, separate all of these arguments which are the switches in this case you separate them all with a space. There's a space here between ls and dash l and a space between uh, dash l and dash a and so those spaces just help the command line understand wh which bits which. I run both of those together, it's actually scrolled off the screen, so I'm just going to scroll, use the scroll bar to, to uh, go back up. You see I now get all of the files, whether or not they're hidden, in this long listing. Which is useful. So I want to just go back now, we've done quite a lot of practical stuff, let's just go back and have a look at that command again. ls dash l dash a. Now the dash l and dash a are switches. They're specific, they usually start with a, a dash or sometimes two dashes depending on which program you're using at the command line. But they, as, we, as, we've, uh, as we've looked at, they alter the behavior of that program and tell it to do something specific like give me a long listing, show all the files. But the, these are switches but they're also arguments. A switch is a special type of argument. Let me give an example here. If I wanted ls to not show me the current working directory, but list a different folder, like let's say again slash library, I could give it I could give ls another argument here. So I put another space to separate that out and then say slash library. Now both dash l, dash a, and slash library are all arguments i.e. they're extra things that we add after the name of the program which is ls which instruct the program more specifically what we want it to do but these are switches they instruct a uh, instruct ls to do a specific behavior and this slash library is just uh, a plain argument because it says I want you to list slash library not where I am right now and so those command line arguments allow you to be specific about what you want the program to do and they're separated by that space each of them so if I press return on that we now get the long listing of library and there's only one hidden file in this case which is dot localized in fact it's zero bytes which means it's obviously just a placeholder uh, or something like that but the point is because we gave those arguments which said Run the. We're telling this. We're telling the uh, command line here. Run the program ls. Ask it to give me a long listing. Ask it to show me all the files. And I want to look at the slash library directory. So there we go. Now, having just taught you all that about dash l dash a, there's actually a quicker, a slightly quicker way to do this, because both of these switches begin with a single dash. I can actually just combine them like this. So it, I can just put l ls dash l a because they both have one hyphen in front of them I can combine them together into one command and I can just say ls dash la slash library and that gives me the same result there so what have we learnt so far well we've learnt about pwd and cd pwd prints your working directory i.e. the directory that the command line is looking at right now like this and CD allows you to change that working directory so you're navigating around your computer's hard drive with CD so that um, any any programs that you run from the command line know 
where the files you want to act on might be. So if I wanted to remove a file in my public directory, I go cd public and then I would issue the command to remove that file and it would know I wanted to work on it in the public directory because I've already cd'd there. So we've learnt that print working directory and change directory. And we've also learnt about how to use ls to give a file listing. And we've learnt about arguments. Arguments on the command line which can be switches and can be just any other data that that program might need to run. So ls is a program and we tell it the switches change the program's behaviour and any other information that the program might need like the directory that I want to work on if it isn't the current working directory. So there we go. I've talked a little bit about those things. Now I appreciate this might be a little bit difficult to get your head around if you haven't looked at a command line before. So you may want to just <laughs> perhaps go over this another time and take a little time to understand this yourself. To understand um, how you issue a command over the command line will take a little bit of time, so don't don't uh, despair if you haven't got this first time round. But I hope this has shown some of the, some of the very very basics on how we issue commands in the terminal and how all those bits of the command are broken up and exactly what that is doing. So there we go. That's it for the moment. I may I very I very well may come back to this subject later if there's interest to look at some some more advanced things to go a little bit further in the terminal um but for now uh this is it so uh, I'm Peter Upfold you've been um watching the Stealth Mac podcast and I don't have the website open but never mind and uh I'll see you uh soon on the Stealth Mac podcast thank you